In discussing this book more, which is about sex or people's sexual activity, um, I, I have to tell you that I'm a very conflicted person. I'm not really sure that sex is enjoyable, like fun. Uh, and I think that's because I've been raised here as an American in a society that is given us mixed messages all the time. Is, uh, is sex enjoyable or is it not enjoyable? Is it, uh, should we do it or should we not do it? Uh, is it sinful or is it uh, not sinful? Uh, is this sinful and that not sinful? It's all just a mess. And, uh, you know, with the, with the, uh, given the, you know, Christian society that uh, has dominated, uh, and the commercial society that's dominated. So, so you have this commercial, uh, uh, life that is always pushing and using sex to sell things. And then you have this uh, Christian uh, or religious angle that is uh, uh, pulling us in because of our conflicts with sex and, and gilding us out and, uh, you know, confusing us even more. So, uh, so that's, you know, one thing I wanted to say along with this is that, 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 but, you know, I, I, I don't know how to deal with it, never did know how to deal with it. And certain things in my life that went on uh, made it even more difficult to deal with. So that's that. Hello. I decided to uh, come outside to record this one. It's uh, January 27th. I get a little tired of sitting around in my room, so, uh, and it's like uh, 46 degrees something, so it's not so bad out, and uh, I just came out here to Stuyvesant Park to uh, talk about more. That's the book I'm talking about today. More by Molly Roden Winter. I didn't read the book in uh, text. I listened to it on audiobook, and I did that uh, at uh, 1.2 speed. So I did speed it up a little bit. It's, uh, if it's run at normal speed, it goes about eight hours. So it's not a big, big, big long book. Um, and uh, it's about, uh, a woman's, a couple's, from the woman point of view, it's written by Molly, this woman, Molly wrote in winter, as I said, and she reads the uh, book. So that's uh, another reason why I, I uh, listen to it instead of reading it, because I hear her voice and how she feels about the whole thing. Um, I heard about the book on a podcast and uh, heard that it was, you know, popular and uh so there's a slight cynicism uh in in reading the book and bringing it to you because i figured that maybe people would be interested in hearing about it so it might be popular for my video uh site but uh really i just wanted to talk about these issues because it's not uh it's not uh foreign to how i've lived and uh some feelings about it so uh what we have and more is we have a couple that uh, uh, apparently is uh, living comfortably. Um, they, in the course of the book, they have end up having three uh, children. Uh, they're married and they live in Park Slope in Brooklyn. 
Now, anybody in New York knows that uh, if you have three children and you live in Park Slope, unless uh, all the children live in the same room or something, uh, you might have a little bit of uh, wealth, the buffer, uh, security, uh, financial security. So, uh, so I say Park Slope because the book uh, does come from a sort of uh, privileged position in that uh, she never mentions finances, money, uh, that's never an issue. I mean, in a lot of people's relationships, particularly now, money is a big issue. I think they bought a house uh, in the course of the story. Um, so, and, and continuing to stay in the slope. So I assume they, they bought a town. Uh, she mentions 10th Street some, so I assume they bought a uh, townhouse uh, in Park Slope, which is gonna set you back uh, I don't know, four or five million or something like that, probably, I don't know, whenever, whatever. I haven't uh, shopped for one uh, lately. So, um, so what, it, it, it's, uh, what goes on is uh, she, uh, Molly, uh, somehow the couple decide, I don't remember how it all went down, but the couple decide that they're going to uh, try opening their relationship. Uh, and they uh, set about uh, doing that. Uh, they do open their relationship. Uh, he starts seeing other people. I'm not sure how. She starts seeing other people through uh, Ashley Madison site. Uh, so, uh, of course, this is back some years ago now because the course of the story goes uh, over 10 years, actually. So, uh, and then however long she took to write the book. So I assume that uh, most of the story is going on, uh, you know, maybe 2010 until now. She um, has various adventures and it all, it ultimately it's, it's a pretty positive book uh, on polyamory and uh, you know, uh, swinging, and she never mentions the word swinging because uh, it's really old-fashioned, uh, unmentionable uh, word, I guess, in the uh, in the uh, scene of people who are doing. Uh, you know, swinging evokes uh, well her parents' generation, uh, which would be my generation. Uh, she is uh, what fifty-one years old now, I guess. So. Basically, she is uh, the child of my generation. If I had a, a child at, a, at age uh, 21, uh, it would be someone like her, except I'm not a rich guy. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, she probably wouldn't end up at Park Slope. <clears throat> and I probably wouldn't have been a good daddy. In more, at one point, she talks about uh, going to uh, Les Trapeze, uh, which is not French, it's, it was a Manhattan-based uh, kind of old-school swinger club, like uh, very sort of 70s. Anyway, it closed down within the past 10 years, and the last girlfriend, my young girlfriend I was talking about, uh, I went there a couple of times, actually. I went there years ago with somebody else, another woman, and I went there with uh, my girlfriend uh, recently, you know, within the past 10 years. And uh, <laughs> we were there for about, I don't know, about 10 minutes. You go in and you go to like a locker room area where you get out of your street clothes into your play clothes, which is like underwear, basically. So then we walked out of there and we're walking around and uh, she was wearing her underpants and uh, some woman, I thought it was a guy, but some woman like grabbed their crotch and like, what, you know? Uh, so uh, we kind of left within like uh, 10 minutes. And so that was my experience there. But uh, see these things, that's another thing with this, with this uh, long age gap uh, relationship. Cause um, you know, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do what she was doing because I was so much older. So, you know, I'm not a, an attractive young man. So at swing clubs and things like that, I'm, you know, out of the running basically. And 
and it makes her look like a prostitute, basically, or looks like there's not such a thing as a prostitute. She, uh, uh, it made her look like a woman who was prostituting herself or is being prostituted in this particular situation. <clears throat> so um, that's uh, my experience with that. Uh, you know, her, her, uh, her other play friend uh, had hair, so, you know, he was uh, six years younger and he had hair, so they went to another place after that and had a good time, but, uh, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't going to work for me, so I just wanted to add that little experience of my being at uh, Les Trapezes. So yeah, uh, polyamory, um, this kind of thing is, is not uh, extreme and, and out of the ordinary for me. It isn't even out of the ordinary for her mother, as she finds out their mother has, uh, has been doing this as well. Uh, her sister, I think, clues her into that that her mother, uh, way back in the day, you know, you remember Jim Molly? Well, it was Jim, and Jim was her uh, lover, and um, who uh, was also involved in some kind of a cult. I don't remember the cult name right now. I was going to look it up, but I forgot. Um, some kind of Japanese cult uh, that he was involved in. When, one of these things where you don't take any medicine and stuff like that. So as a, a child, Molly was not uh, permitted to take medicine, things like that. So, uh, so uh, Jim and the mother are, are uh, it's revealed, you know, later while uh, Molly is going through her uh, adventures here that, that her, her mother actually had this other lover uh, years ago, and that it uh, it you know uh, it broke up, or when when Molly breaks up with someone, um, or or one of one of her hook hookups falls apart, she uh, her mother says, "Well, don't worry, there will be more," and hence the title of the book, "More," uh, which means more sex, uh, more connection, more uh, whatever. Uh, I was married many, many years ago when I was 21, actually, and uh, to a high school sweetheart, Anne. And Anne is a great person. And uh, we were married for over 10 years. But in the course of that, uh, there was a uh, polyamory going on in our home. So uh, I had met someone else uh, on, at a voice workshop, uh, a former Bennington student. That's the first time I sort of got involved with, with Bennington College. And uh, I'm wondering if this squirrel's gonna attack my camera, my iPhone. Uh, so I, was, uh, I, I got involved with someone at a voice workshop in Mexico and she followed me back to uh, upstate New York, where I lived, or, or Vermont, actually, uh, Bennington, Vermont. And uh, ultimately, uh, we, we stayed together for a few years, and, and Anne met up with somebody else. And so within the same house, there were basically these two uh, extra people uh, who we were not married to, who we were having relationships with. Uh, she's still with the man, Bob, uh, from back, back then. Um, uh, I am not. I, uh, Susan and I broke up, uh, you know, way back then, uh, because, because I'm not the kind of person you stay with, uh, for your entire life because I'm not a stayer. So that's, uh, that's another thing here. Uh, you know, if, if you want a stable relationship out of somebody like me, I'm, I'm not the person. Which is, you know, good now that I know and it's all over because, uh, well, do we really know what we're like and why we're like what we're like when we're, um, you know, 30 years old? I don't know. I'm not sure. I had to... Uh, I had to learn more along the way and have more experiences with these things. Um, so uh, recently, I also had a uh, 
polyamorous relationship. Uh, uh, Molly uh, Rod Roden Winter mentions uh, reading the book Ethical Slut. Um, and I had met up with, uh, with a very much young, younger woman, uh, 32 years younger than me. And we had a eight year long relationship. Uh, and uh, she had read Ethical Slut before we met and was already uh, committed to a polyamorous lifestyle. So uh, that was uh, suitable to me and I liked that and it was, it was all A-OK -okay with me. And uh, ultimately it didn't work out well for me at all. Uh, or did it? I mean, I guess I found out some stuff about her that I, I didn't really like that much and uh, because of an, another relationship that she got into that I expedited and um, anyway it's uh, it's all kind of complicated and um, you know the book more uh, tells various stories about this kind of thing and uh, they, ha they have a rule when they start out that, that, that they are not going to uh, fall in love. So uh, no love, it's just going to be physical. So you're just, uh, you're just screwing. So that's, that's how they begin. Ultimately, you know, that, that, uh, that, that can't hold. Uh, you know, he meets somebody, an Australian who, uh, or a New Zealander who he calls, uh, re refers to as a nickname of Kiwi. And uh, he comes, becomes, you know, really attached to, to uh, her. And as, as well, she meets a couple of guys that she really likes. And uh, one of which breaks up with her because uh, he, he really wants uh, monogamy. And after his marriage breaks up, he uh, wants that with her. And she can't, she's not ready. She's going to stay with her husband. So... Uh, yeah, she's committed to her uh, marriage and her three children. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff is like in the world of children, uh, having children and uh, worrying about the children. Uh, I don't have any children. I'm not a long-term married person. Uh, so a lot of that is, um, you know, not of my experience, and so I can't really talk about it. I know nothing about it. Uh, but uh, it seems like it might be very challenging. Of course, then, once again, it's the buffer of money and privilege that uh, protects, curve, protects sure. people in a lot of ways from uh, a lot of this kind of stuff. <clears throat> there was another book uh, a little bit earlier, uh, a couple of years ago, called Open by Rachel Krantz, I think is her name. Uh, and... Uh, I read that one. Actually, I heard that one in an audiobook too, because I'd heard her in a podcast and she suggested listening to it, an audiobook. And I expected it to be a, a book about open relationships and uh, polyamory and so forth. It, it ended up really kind of being a book about uh, the dominant relationship she was in with this, this guy, this older guy, and this sort of daddy little girl setup that he was all into. Um, and that's, you know, that's, a, that's a problem with these, uh, polyamorous relationships and well, male, female relationships anyway, is because, you know, we're, we're still, um, we're still trying to get out of the 20th century here. We're still trying to get out of, uh, this, uh, patriarchal system that's been locked in like forever. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, there's waves of feminism, so forth and things go on, but, uh, you know, it's just like you just don't walk into the promised land after being raised and uh, conditioned to be a certain way. You just don't, uh, you know, recover and be pure and innocent and uh, up for anything without the, the traumas of the past uh, bleeding into it. She doesn't mention any sexual uh, traumas or anything. She does mention a good girl uh, sort of syndrome, uh, the, the uh, straight A Molly, 
uh, and uh, how she uh, how she has to try to avoid the uh, the go along thing, the uh, the good girl, the girl who's going to uh, go along with you know whatever her lover, her mother, uh, whoever wants. Uh, and that is a problem in these relationships. Uh, I did have a childhood issue with uh, older boys, like um, five years older than me when I was like 10. And that caused uh, a lot of trauma for me because we were discovered doing this, like three older boys and me and I was interviewed by my parents uh, for uh, a few hours or interminably in the uh, in the kitchen uh, where these, you know, not even 30 year old people, I guess they were just 30. Uh, maybe she was 29 then, I don't know. Um, you know, asking me if I put something in my mouth uh, with these older boys. So I don't know if I did or not, but. <laughs> Uh, I denied it. So, you know, I had a, a childhood trauma because this thing that went on with this male energy, these older boys, which made me distrust myself. Uh, it was an exciting scene. And then the exciting scene gets uh, imbued with danger. And then that's a, kind of a rough setup to go in through your sexual life with. Um, and I'm kind of still dealing with, with all that. I don't know what would have happened otherwise. Um, yeah, I'm gonna diverge otherwise here and talk about a couple of demo uh, documentaries I saw. Um, I, there's, a, uh, um, there's this guy, Scotty Bowers, <clears throat> who was a hustler in LA in this gas station uh, he had a gas. This is right after World War uh, Two, and he was a you know a handsome looking young man. And there's this documentary and a book about him. I'll probably read the book later so I can talk about this stuff more. But uh, there's a documentary about him ca on, called uh, Scotty on Hulu, and I watched that uh, a couple nights ago. And uh, you know it, it was interesting how. Uh, he was completely uh, free of any sexual guilt. Uh, he uh, was bisexual. Uh, he, uh, at age 10, the same age as uh, I was whenever this thing went on with these teenagers in Ohio, he uh, became sexual active with, with uh, men or was exploited sexually by older men, adults. Fortunately, I avoided all that, but I just had these teens instead. Uh, so he, uh, but he liked it. <laughs> he says he like had sex with uh, 25 priests and they gave him some money out of the collection box. So he got rewarded for uh, what he was doing he didn't tell his parents, he didn't tell his family, but he got rewarded for it. Whereas I got caught and I got interrogated and I got shamed for it and I got traumatized. He did not get traumatized and went on from there uh, to become this, you know, this basically this hustler and this guy who hooked up uh, movie stars. Uh, you know, a good thing about the documentary is that it, it pulls the uh, curtain aside about what, you know, people do with their lives. You know, we're, we're Hollywood presented all these people as being, you know, just wholesome and all American. And, you know, so-and-so is married to so-and-so or so-and-so is seen so-and-so when, you know, uh, we come, we learn later. And actually we learn through uh, Scotty and his documentary and his book that a lot of them are doing all kinds of other things. They're uh, hooking up sexually with other people. They're, uh, they're having uh, homosexual interactions. They're, uh, you know, men and women. Uh, you know, the, the, he goes on about Catherine Hepburn. Uh, did, the Tracy and Hepburn thing was all fake, that uh, Tracy was kind of uh, 
weirdly in the closet. He would get drunk and then sleep, spend the night with, uh, with uh, Bowers, uh, Scotty. He doesn't say they had sex, but, you know, uh, Spencer Tracy was kind of alcoholic, which, which apparently uh, Catherine Hepburn did not like. But, uh, but he says, you know, they never lived together. Uh, and, and they they weren't lovers. That uh, Catherine Hepburn was was lesbian. That that's what she you know preferred. So okay. Um, so you know, it, I, I mentioned this to to a friend of mine, a woman friend of mine, actually a, a former lover of mine. That uh, that you know is it, I thought it was interesting that this guy you know started this you know had this childhood sex thing as I did, uh, but his was uh, rewarded with his money and he ended up having no guilt about it at all and ended up, you know, going through this, uh, you know, building this big life. I mean, ultimately in the movie, he ends up with, you know, million dollars that this guy left him. Uh, one of these guys that was involved in, in the this, this sex scene, uh, somebody who was, you know, involved with it. Meanwhile, Scotty Bowers is married the whole time to to women, and he had a chi and, and a child. So, uh, so anyway, uh, <clears throat> you know these these things about uh, about childhood really affect us very much. And uh, you know, she doesn't mention any of that. She doesn't say what really went on with her husband in childhood, or. Uh, Really, what she did, what she did, or any if anything like that happened with her, and and you know, and if it didn't, that's great, and and I think that helps people to be what I consider quite natural. I th I think polyamory is not um, an unnatural thing. I think I think the whole uh, the whole idea, you know, I'm I'm also uh, you know. Uh, informed by some of the ideas of uh, what uh, Christopher Ryan and, and his wife's book um, about uh, the sexual practices of uh, of humans and other uh, mammals, you know, before we got where we are now. Um, and... Uh, Also, I saw a, a documentary last night about uh, Ashley Madison, which is on uh, Hulu. So since uh, I watched a bit since since uh, this woman in the in the Moore book mentioned Ashley Madison, started uh, starting her thing through Ashley Madison, and she did meet I think a couple guys through the Ashley Madison site. Uh, Ashley Madison is quite interesting. There's a Hulu documentary on that too. Ashley Madison is quite interesting in that, uh, you know, it, it uh, the way it works is the men paid to use the site. Women came on for free. Uh, what they ultimately did was ended up making a bunch of fake women so it would look like there are a lot of women and then had like bots answer the uh, messages that these uh, suckers uh, wrote to the fake women. So it was really uh, just a, a, a scheme ultimately that didn't exploit women all that much. It, it just, uh, you know, it had fake women and exploit, exploited men uh, to get their money and, you know, got and was very successful and made lots and lots of money so uh and then all collapsed when when it got hacked and all this was revealed to the world it's a quite an interesting documentary but um yeah so it's weird that she mentioned uh ashley madison in uh, in her book it, it could be taken as a bit of a promo for ashley madison so yeah if you're gonna hook up uh, probably don't use ashley madison she uh, ends up using uh, OK Cupid, which I guess I was on a little bit once. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I haven't really used these things so much. I actually met uh, the the woman, the younger woman I talked about. I met I met her through uh, Facebook. Uh, actually, because of the band uh, that I'm going to play, the tune "Sex Is Law." Uh, 
in this video, and that's the uh, the band I was in, and, and that's kind of attracted this younger woman to me because, uh, you know, there were videos of me uh, being young and and, uh, and in control as this uh, lead singer in a band and all that, you know, the, that kind of role that, um, you know, people are suckered into as thinking some, that is something appealing and something they want to get uh, near. <clears throat> um, Now I'm just uh, happy that I'm out of it. Uh, at 72, uh, it's not as though I'm not, I don't have the capacity to have sex. Uh, I do. Uh, I don't need uh, Viagra or whatever. Uh, I don't have uh, ED. Uh, but I, I try to stay out of these things. Um, if I do do anything, uh, it's going to be just uh, not involved personally in, in the most impersonal way. So let's put it that way. And I thought I was just going to be the extra guy in, the, in this uh, in this polyamorous sort of situation and that's one of the other risk in these you can't you you cannot uh you cannot be secure in what's going to happen it might start this way and might evolve into something else and uh you know i thought uh being an extra man was uh was a good thing for me but it just you know it, it was out of control and these things go out of control because there's two two people and too many variables and especially if the, your economic situation is is not in your control so much that's a, more of an, a variable that more upsets the whole thing um, so I don't know if I'm going to record more of this inside but uh, you know I know this has been kind of a mess that's because it's sort of you know, I don't really know how to talk about these things, and although I'm kind of compelled to, like this thing, stuff that went on with me as a kid in Ohio, and uh, you know, all these sexual attitudes and, and my own behavior even now, so uh, so it's uncomfortable for me to talk about the, these things, and, and you know, that's you know, that's that's why this book is is a good book uh, more uh, because it it. Uh, you know, it confronts these things that are real and real in people's lives. And, you know, good for, uh, good for uh, Stuart, was that her husband's name? Good for Molly and Stuart in, in trying this adventure from their uh, position of, uh, of wealth and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I, I resent that in a way or I'm jealous, but, uh, you know, they probably worked hard for it or were born in the right place. So good on them. And, uh, so more is a is a reasonably good book, and uh, you know, give it a listen, whatever. Uh, Open by uh, Rachel Krantz is interesting uh, because it does come on this other angle. Uh, what else did I talk about? Scotty, a really interesting documentary, and uh, Ashley Madison. Don't join Ashley Madison; it's a ripoff. Uh, thanks for watching and like and subscribe.